read all the safety instructions that you will have in the tool manual. Make sure the tools are completely disconnected from the machine um, and they've been left for a short period to make sure there's no remaining electricity in any of the boards. So pull the blades out and then any accessories that go with. Should it be required, any PPE, so if your particular requirements are that you have to wear certain gloves when handling blades, then adhere to that. Also, always try and use fresh oil and grease. Um, as over time, oils and greases will deteriorate um, and then they lose that lubricity and you could end up causing more harm than good. And lastly, as I said, make sure your tools are in a good condition. If you've got a hex key and it starts to round off, don't try and persevere with it um, because there's a good chance you're going to ruin the cap heads and then it's going to make life harder. Same goes with the Torx bits. Okay, so we've also now put together for you a short list of all the necessary drivers to carry out the maintenance on all of the tools. And you'll also find all the necessary part numbers there as well. So the first tool we're going to cover is our EOT250. So this is the performance oscillating tool. Um, very good, very multi-purpose. So as you can see, there's a small step-by-step -step here. This will be covered in your tool manual as well. So you can see, remove your glide disc and give that a check. Make sure that the glide, sheet, glide disc hasn't cracked um, or isn't marked. Remove the sleeve, then remove the guide cap, then clean up the guide and blade holder area. Check for any wear marks. So on the little black ring on the EOT250, there should be a cross on it. Check that, make sure it hasn't worn. Um, if it has, replace it. Discard of any used parts reinsert and grace. So we're now just going to hand over to my colleague Ian who has carried out the maintenance for you to follow along. Today we've been showing you how to take care and maintain three types of oscillating tools. The first one we have is the pneumatic oscillating tool or the POT. The second one we have is the EOT, electric oscillating tool. And then the third one we have is the electric oscillating tool for high performance, known as the EOT 250. The first thing you're going to need to make sure you have is a clean environment to work on. The tools that you're going to be using are the tools that, rec the tools that you're going to be using are the tools that are recommended by Zund themselves, along with a clean cloth, preferably lint-free, and some kind of cleaning solution as well. In this case, we're using an anti-static foaming cleaner. The first tool we're going to be looking at in detail is the EOT250. And the first thing you need to do to make a safe environment is to remove the blade. When you have the glide shoe off, it's a good chance to inspect it to make sure there's no damage. There's two examples over here. The first one I'm showing you, you can see there's lots of cracks on it. This can cause a safety issue. And the second here, I, one you can see here, we have a slight wear on one side. Again, we recommend that these should be replaced at this time compared to a brand new one. Next up we need to do is using the two and a half mil Allen key, remove the outer shield. And slide over the top and remove to one point. We need it, the one and a half millimeter Allen key then supplied with the tool just to remove the blade. And then we can remove the blade safely and place to one side. The next thing we're gonna be doing is removing these four screws here. And in this case, there's a T8, a Torx bit. And we remove the four screws accordingly.
Next thing we need to do is pop the end cap off. If it doesn't come off straight away, what you can do is use the small key as a slight lever just to lever that off. Inside you can see that we have the blade holder itself. This should be inspected for any wear at all. If there is any insignificant wear in that point, we recommend that you contact us, the service department, and then we can arrange for the tool to be repaired. The next bit we're looking at is a glide disc itself. This is so that the blade holder can slide up and down nice and freely. The next two bits we have is the end cap. Again, we should be inspecting this for any damage or wear, especially any burring around this point here. And then the third bit we have is the actual blade guide itself. On the blade guide itself, you may notice that we have an X. This is actually a wear indicator. And what we're looking at is that this X should be visible at all times. If there's any indication this X is wear, even on any of the four corners or any part of the X itself, then it's time to replace it immediately. If not doing so, you can just damage the tool beyond repair. Here is a brand new one for an example. At this point we should try and clean the best we can any debris from around the blade holder and also inside the actual mechanism itself. So this is the part that's oscillating up and down. Once we're happy that we've removed any debris, it's time to reinsert everything back in the correct order. So the first thing we need to do is insert the blade guide back into the hole, the shoe at the bottom. Now there is actually a way around this should go, and basically what we have is there's a hole here, and there's a slight hole on this, on the bottom cap as well, and these should line up together. Like so. The next thing is to insert the actual glide mechanism itself. And again, this can only go one way round. It is possible to put it back to front, but what you'll see is that the outside bit will be almost flush when you know you've got it the correct way round. We can then input the glide shoe back in and the hole will locate onto this locating pin here. And snap into place. We can then lock it back up using the T8 torque screws. lock up individually. At this point it's always a good idea to check the actual grub screws that hold the blade in place. If there is any wear and tear on these they should again be replaced straight away and what we're looking for is any wear and tear on the bottom of the screw and also where the allen key inserts itself. Again here is a brand new one to compare it with. We can then reinsert the blade. Along with the outer K8 
casing. And then using the grease that's been supplied by Zund for your tool, you have a greasing point on the back of the tool. You insert the syringe, press down until you see grease start to exit there. And that's all you need. Wipe away any excess. And then the glide shoe can go back on with the Zun logo lining up with the screw and the slot on the outer casing. Thank you for that, Ian. Um, so hopefully that gives you guys a good idea and something to follow going ahead um, and how to do the maintenance on a 250. So what you'll see here is as you're carrying out your maintenance, if you find you've got bits that you're running out of and things like that,